Welcome to Navigating the Truth and it is April 16, 2023 and this week's guest is Darius Wright and Darius talks about the out-of-body experience. Right. We interrupt to bring you this. We've hijacked your daily dose of regurgitated news to bring you Navigating the Truth. Brace yourself, listeners, as you're about to enter a world where the narrative is no longer masqueraded as the truth. A world where the conspiracies of yesterday's translate into the truths of today. Are you listening? The veils covering the truth are lifting and understandings once suppressed are finally being revealed. Will you be ready? And now, your host and navigator through these circles of lies, the host of Navigating the Truth, Caroline Bell Tumblety. Hi, welcome to Navigating the Truth on the 16th of April, Sunday. It is evening where I am, I'm, and it is morning in Las Vegas, and I have a really awesome guest with me today, and it's very early in the morning, so I'm very grateful that he's up early and we are doing the show. And I want to thank the listeners who have decided to join us today. Uh, there is a donation button on the website. If you like what you're hearing, click that donate button. There's a lot of really excellent shows here. And let me tell you about our guest. Today I have Darius J. Wright. Darius has been awake to the nature of this reality since he was a small child. And growing up, seeing, feeling, I can't read, hang on. <laughs> growing up, he was seeing, feeling, knowing and experiencing things others around him didn't. Darius learned to channel his energy into his physical body, helping him ground, calm and center himself energetically to gain access to other realms. Over the years, he studied and practiced a variety of disciplines related to the physical training, arts and health. Alongside his physical development and training, he continued to explore and challenge himself in the metaphysical realms. At the young age of just 16, Darius was taken during sleep outside this construct by a being who identified themselves as Celeste. Celeste showed him not just his future, but the future of this reality and many of us in it. Darius has had numerous out-of-body experiences over the years and explored various realms and met a variety of beings who have shared the insights and information with him. He now has dedicated his time here to teaching people and doing what they call the great work, which is waking people up to the other side. I'd like to welcome Darius. Welcome to Navigating the Truth. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. It is my pleasure. And I have, um, I kind of found you, um, I don't know, maybe maybe a year ago, maybe a little less and I was just so interested in what you were sharing. And I just thought to myself, you were just cutting through a lot of the, the nonsense because what I have found is there is a lot of information out there, but a lot of it is confusing. Like using different terms for the same thing. Yeah, that's something that I noticed when I was mm -hmm. doing um, the out-of-body stuff is that mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff that I was researching um, w when I had them right the out-of-body to realize that it was nothing like what people were saying at all and that, that's where that's where I think uh, well not I think I know that a lot of people don't really know right it's, it's sort of like you know, it's sort of like they're just talking based off of what other people have shared, not speaking of firsthand experience. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, the, the, a lot of the stuff is not true related to the out of body state uh, okay. based off my experience of doing it hundreds of times since, I mean, you're talking about since 16, really, mm -hmm. to present yeah. date. Yeah. So for some of the listeners who don't know what astral travel is or out-of-body experience 
How about you break it down for them? Yeah, so I don't I don't like to classify it as astral or lucid dreaming because the out of body state when I refer to that, the, a lot of people couple it in with uh, astral travel and stuff like that, but it's actually nothing to do with that. Um, when you are dreaming or lucid dreaming, your your consciousness on the I like to refer to it as the other side mm-hmm. is only about fifty percent there. That's why you can't bring in the full detail. There's fragments. It's like a dream, right? So right. you have a dream. Yeah. You can't bring in everything in. Now when you properly leave your body um and in particular when you do it where you are 100 percent out it is the same thing as having a near-death experience but you're doing it controlled now typically when you do this you will enter um sleep paralysis a lot of people have sleep paralysis and they don't even understand what that is Mm -hmm. Sleep paralysis is the initial stages of leaving your body. Now, when you leave your body, this is why I said before, um, based off my experience of doing this, I've come to the conclusion that a lot of people have not actually experienced this or, or done it before. Because when you actually leave, it is more physical, it is more real, and it is more dense. And I not I'm I'm harping on dense because it is more dense than having a physical body when you exit the body. And this is something when people experience is a shock factor, is a shock factor mm-hmm. for me because you would think it would be the opposite, mm-hmm. but what as I say it's dense, it's it's also all the pleasures of physicality with no limitation. When you when you leave your body controlled, you get access to everything the more that you do it. And the things that I've gained access to is the records. Now the records go into the records of the realm that we're in now and also outside of the construct completely. It goes into the memories, the memories of what people call past lives which are also part of those records. You get access to like things like the halls of Amente. Mm-hmm. All of these places exist here, but they're just in a different another dimensional space that could only be accessed when you take the soul out of the body, right? Mm -hmm. Um, You could get contact with other beings. I've spoken to my uh, uncle that has passed away almost five years ago. So you could contact dead relatives. Mm -hmm. Um, All a host of uh, different beings exist there that you could contact. So to summarize it, it's essentially you're you're having a near death experience control. That's what an out of body is, and that's what I've been doing now for quite some time. And I've learned how to do this controlled. Where, mm-hmm. like, even before coming on this call, um, this uh, this uh, ra- radio show, doing this mm-hmm. just tonight, I've popped out of my body five times. Wow! Um, in that in that night, and um, it was me also viewing. Um, time. I was mm-hmm. seeing time bending, all those things. I mean, th- we could, we're going to talk about this all, but that's a summary, the best yeah. way I could do it. Yeah. And uh, like when I had spoke to you briefly the other day there, it is a shock, like, because you are wholly who you are. <laughs> and I think that was the big shocker for me. It was the, um, the dream personality or just a little piece of me. It was everything, every single part of me. And I was confused about it the first time that, um, or one of the times that it happened when I was literally out and somewhere else. It was the whole, I, I knew I was me. I wasn't questioning it. I was like, and all the ideas that I have or the beliefs that I would, well, letting them go. But that was the shocker. That was the shocker for me. There wasn't any, um, there was no deception. Well, that's where, like, that's something that also shocked me as well. Like, a lot of people think um, when they cross over or death or the out-of-body state, which is, um, it's all the same, Right. A lot of people think when you do that or you cross over to the other side, 
that somehow what people call your personality, your soul, who, what makes you all your thoughts, everything that you've thought, who you are, that all comes with you. It's mm-hmm. all there. The, the personality doesn't change. Um, a, some people are underneath this belief that when you do, you become, yeah, you do become more because you're gaining more access Mm -hmm. to information that has always been there. But your personality comes with you. Mm -hmm. Everything, who you are, every thought that you had. And that's one of the biggest, when I came out, I was like, I'm like, oh my God, like exactly who I am, my personality, consciousness exists outside the body. And what, when also, when also you come out of the body as well, this is what I want people to understand too, is through these experiences that I've had, when you end up coming out fully and completely, you'll end up standing up. And when you turn around, like I said, you're, it's almost like your soul holds an imprint of your physical body. So when you come out, and how I already said before, how it's more physical, more dense and more real, it feels like you're walking in your physical body while at the same time you could access multidimensional spaces, time itself. Not only that, when you look back at the bed, you will see your physical body still sleeping. Mm -hmm. And this will put a lot of people into fear and shock of like, oh, I'm dead. When you're not, you're just having an out of body. But there is density there and the personality, everything goes with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That was a shocker. <laughs> that was a definite shocker. And that was also like, uh, one of the things that made me realize how very real the other realms are because I hadn't become somebody else. Like it wasn't like a dream personality. It was actually me. It was wholly me. <laughs> but I used to have the feeling like many, many years ago, and I was, um, I I had this sense that every time I went to sleep, I died. Every night I died. And I kind of wonder if like, um, well, I don't wonder. I kind of know that it, I was doing it. But there was some kind of barrier that prevented me from remembering or accessing like the information that I might have gained when I was there. But I had the sense that I was dying every night, in a sense. <laughs> yeah, well, this is where it goes into also when you're trying to, this is where it goes into also the health as well, the health of the body. Now, the thing is, when you are when you share that, right, mm-hmm. you're still to to allow everybody to understand this. A near-death experience, an out-of-body experience, a lucid dream, and a dream, Mm -hmm. they're different, yes, in terms of what, how you experience them. But in terms of accessing the other side, Mm -hmm. everybody's doing that every single night when they go to sleep. But why why aren't people remembering it? Like, for instance, Mm -hmm. like, you have an experience, but you can't bring back that... You can't bring back that minute detail. Mm -hmm. It's, this is how I've come to understand this, right? Yeah. When, when you, when you end up leaving, right? And Mm -hmm. let's just say if the health of the body isn't primed and ready, it fries out your central nervous system. And this is based off experience. When I find, and I'm a healthy person. But Mm -hmm. I find when I'm in my out-of-body states and I'm accessing all these records and information in the true universe, when I come back into the body, because that state that I'm in is very real and Mm -hmm. I I have access to all of the detail, when I come back into the body, if the body is not properly hydrated, not properly taken care of, it fries out your central nervous system because our soul is connected through the central nervous system. It connects through every aspect of the body. So when, when you leave, when the soul leaves the body and you access this information 
and you bring it within the body, if the body is not prepared for that, typically what happens is you will get sick or you will be basically burnt out for like a, um, I remember I was doing this, um, I, I want, I went about a week of doing it every single day and I was going too hard, too fast of accessing information and doing this where I was, it burnt out my body for about a month. A good month I was completely fried mm -hmm. and I didn't understand why. And that's, that's the reason why also the health matters as well. Not necessarily yeah. for the aesthetics or any of that. It just basic health is essential when you are awakening the dormant abilities within your body to access that which we all have access to mm -hmm. right well yeah so. yeah that makes sense like the health of the body is important the um because that is the energy that is um well it's keeping us here it's keeping us functioning but it also helps we um our ele electromagnetic field it helps we um it it does it's very important and the unfortunate thing about it is we're being poisoned and it's a constant um, battle to actually remain in a healthy state. Yeah, yeah, it is because they're they're doing it on all fronts too. So this is why it's even like it's more, there has to be a lot of effort, well, more effort than it is actually normally required in an ideal realm, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but there, I like to present it like this. What to to people that don't understand? Because it actually took me a little bit, even though I'm uh, healthy. It it took me. I was like, because I was accessing all this information in the out of body state, and I'm asking myself, I'm like, wait a second, why does it really matter? Why does it matter if my body's healthy? It doesn't mm -hmm. matter because I'm leaving my body, and I have physicality over there, and. Mm -hmm. The body doesn't matter. Consciousness exists outside of the body, my personality, everything, my soul. So why do I have to even have give this even one percent of my energy, the physical mm -hmm. vessel? And it actually took me about three months to actually, you know, fully understand why. The reason why is why do you think there's such an aggressive effort? Mm. on destroying the health of the body why do you think there's such an aggressive effort of forcing chemicals vaccines all these things that actually destroy the dna of the physical body to access that which it has a god-given right to access yeah. the, that is their number one uh push is to diminish your health because when you become weak physically in a realm like this, you become weak spiritually. It's it's all connected, right? Mm -hmm. The physical yeah. body and your soul is connected, and they should be treated as such. Even so much so, when you access, uh, when I was in the halls of Amente accessing the records, mm -hmm. the, in a point of time in this realm, they've known that as well. You, you'll see a lot of awakened souls with all their dormant abilities activated within the physical body that their bodies were on par with their physical develop with their spiritual development it is so vital to be conscious about your health because it is what they are what they're forcing or trying to destroy and they're actually doing a have done a pretty good job at it thus far because mm -hmm. when the health of the body is primed your central nervous system everything is running and purring properly everything turns on everything mm -hmm. within your body turns on all of these dormant abilities awaken and and could be remembered and done much more easily and the information from the other side comes within the body more easily as well mm -hmm. um even on even on the other side as well like i said before it, you have physicality there. And even though it doesn't have the distortions of the physical body here, mm -hmm. like I said before, it's all the pleasures of physicality with no limitations. But even there, if you're, it works differently. If your frequency, your, your, your energetic field is off, it will even have an effect on you over there. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So as above, so, so below as within, so without, I know that's, you know, 
saying bi- biblical things here, but that's that's really how it is. Yeah, yeah it's mm-hmm. true. It's the truth. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, like that is one of the things that uh, I feel is really important is like in these, um, I don't even want to say times, because I don't think there's been a time like this ever, the the health of the body. You had mentioned um, adding a little salt to water. I had heard you mention that, and I actually started yep. doing it, and I actually felt um, much clearer. So like my, the re- yeah, sorry. So the oh, I, I thought you were done. That's why I started talking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the um, the salt is uh, in this art right, because of where we're at now. Mm-hmm. Personally, I I could I could speak of my abilities, and I'm not speaking of this as a way as me. The thing is. Many people are experiencing all of these energetic things that are happening, awakening within them. That's mm-hmm. not just me. It's it's everybody. We're in a certain state right now where people are getting access to to the true universe, the true nature of reality, how it works. People are getting access to that, and what the body needs is for the central nerve for that information to come through. So the central nervous system needs to be soothed for all that information to come through. The best way to do that is salt and water because it is it helps everything flow a lot a lot more effectively, especially when you're bringing in the information from the other side within the physical vessel. Mm-hmm. And yet the um, the dogma in this realm would tell you that salt and water is not necessarily good for you, like the instance of seawater. You know, like you can't drink that, but it's. It's actually the nutrient itself is is missing for your bodies. It's being depleted on some level. Yeah, the salt is. Um, I, I mean, I I basically have right now. This is me, and I'll also I'm not giving medical advice or anything like that. <laughs> but for me personally, what I do based off what I'm doing. The, uh, the out-of-body states, the things that I'm accessing, I do half of a teaspoon of salt in my water every half a liter of water because it's 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 more of the minerals that are within salt mm-hmm. that that the body needs in order for with what I'm doing in the in the place that we're in for information to come within the body a lot more easily without frying it out. Right, and we don't want to fry out. Um, Can you believe it? We're coming up on our first break. We also have a question from Sherry, but I'll answer it when we come back. So hold on, listeners. We're coming up on a three-minute break, and we will be right back. You're listening to Navigating the Truth with Caroline Bell Templeton, where the truth survives and the lies are exposed. I just want to assure you that uh, everything is under control. There's been no damage except for some temporary malfunction of the radio. Come be a part of this awakening by joining us in chat or by calling our hotline at 702-425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Worldwide callers, find us on Skype at KCOR Radio. We're pushing the ultimate frontier here. Control must be maintained. More disinformation exposed and the truth discovered after a word from our sponsors. One million miles till midnight. A story of timelines, artificial worlds, simulated races, and the galactic imprint, and the destiny of a blue world called Earth. One million miles till midnight, written by Solaris Blue Raven, is a journey through the mind's eye which allows the reader to surf a wave of technological and multidimensional intellect, revealing a bridge between conscious design and the truth. A multidimensional bleed-through awakens the world of artificial intelligence to set sail into the frontiers of a vast multiverse, morphing planets and terraforming ascended worlds beyond the linear programs of a fated race. 
One Million Miles Till Midnight will awaken, inspire, prepare, and enlighten one to the many multidimensional states of consciousness and worlds we reside in. With every cell and atom, we are this truth and multiverse. One Million Miles Till Midnight, written by Solaris Blue Raven. Available now at Amazon.com. Don't wait. Get your copy today. One, two, three, four. To the KCOR Digital Radio Network. I love the way it sounds. I love the music. I listen all day. The future of radio is here and now. The only. Alien Deceptions, a suspenseful sci-fi romance thriller by Tina Marie. Featuring the tantalizing Erica Jones and the mysterious Russell Hamilton. An out-of-this-world book of fiction, based on years of document facts and files the government does not want you to know about. At least, not yet. Alien Deceptions by Tina Marie. Available now at Amazon.com or get a signed copy at TinaMarieEntertainment.com. Get your copy now. Change your frequency, change your life with the Lemurian Plug. The Lemurian Plug is easy to control, simple to set up, and wireless. It helps to neutralize toxins and has restorative frequencies for healing. It also helps to protect you and your family from EMFs. The Lemurian Plug is energy efficient and designed using ancient technology for a superior design. One unit can cover up to 1,000 square feet. This life-changing product is reasonably priced. And isn't your family's health worth a small investment? For more information on the miraculous effects of this plug or to purchase the Lemarian Plug, visit thelemarianplug.com. That's thelemarianplug.com. The Lemarian Plug is like nothing you've ever experienced. Order yours today. Vegas' is number one source for talk and new music. How cool is that? Going live in three, two, one. Welcome back to Navigating the Truth, the one show that peels back the masks of the elite and exposes the truth we're not being told. Here to warn you. You must not abuse the power you've been given. Eventually, you will lose control of that power and the whole world will suffer. Come partake in the awakening by calling the show at 702-425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Give us a call now. Those around the world, connect with us on Skype at KCOR Radio. Follow us on Twitter at KCOR Radio or Use hashtag KCOR. Come engage in the discussion live in our chat room at www.kcorradio.com. Our survival depends upon it. Now, back to examining the narratives and uncovering the truth with your host of Navigating the Truth, Caroline Bell Tumblety. Caroline Bell Tumblety. Hi, welcome back to Navigating the Truth and... I hope you grabbed your water, your tea, your coffee and settle down. We have Darius J. Wright with us today and we were just talking before the break about the importance of getting necessary minerals and nutrients into your body. And we had a question. Um, Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Thanks for asking a question. And it is what kind of salt, regular salt or sea salt? Darius. So what I use, and before I even answer that, I just wanted to say as well, based off research that I've done, which is also available for people to do as well, um, there was actually a doctor that mentioned salt, right? And he was saying that it is more dangerous to have too little salt and sodium in your body than too much of it. Mm -hmm. Um, This so it, salt is a very important mineral to have in particular to everything that I've already stated before with uh, access to all the dormant ability stuff. Now, for the salt that I use, I use three types of salts, and it's not necessarily that I use them because 
well, one is kind of better, but they're pretty much all the same, sort of. But it's uh, sea salt, um, Himalayan salt, and Redmond, Redmond salt. And mm-hmm. just when you buy salt, try to make sure that it doesn't go through like this process. Uh, anything that's heavily processed, you shouldn't be eating. And that's including anything, not just salt, that's food as well, because the process itself is what causes the issues. Salt gets a bad rap mm-hmm. because what we're, what people consider salt, what they're ingesting, what processed food is, is the stuff that you don't want to be ingesting. Just like how sugar gets a bad rap when people say sugar is a bad thing. No, sugar isn't really bad. I mean, if you're eating sugar in its natural form through fruit mm-hmm. or honey and stuff like that, you, you'll be okay versus if you're eating you know processed food all the time and not sugar so there are, those are the salts that i use yeah yeah thank you for that and thank you for that question sherry yeah i mean it is about like doing your own research like questioning these things you know that have been kind of stuffed in our throats <laughs> for lack of a better um, term the the processed salt has nothing in it but bad crap, you know, it does not do the body any good. And unfortunately, it's in just about every single thing out there as far as processed foods go. So, yeah, thank you for that. And I had been talking to Tina Marie. She had been telling me she had been using salt for a long time. Um, so there are um, resources out there. There are inf- There is information available. And it, we're grateful to people like Darius who are sharing their information, but it's really important to um, to discover things for yourself as well. Yeah, I mean, I I could give a recommendation, but like I said, this is just a don't don't just follow it because because my I, I'm everybody for instance based off how much you weigh and stuff like that is going to mm-hmm. depend on how much water you need per day. Mm-hmm. But what what I what I do, which I've I've already shared as well, but I, I just take half a teaspoon of salt and half a liter of water. And I basically I only drink two liters of water a day. So mm-hmm. basically every liter has a teaspoon of salt in it. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm drinking every single every single day. And, I've been and it's doing working. That. Yeah. And it's yeah. working. Yeah. It's doing yeah. what you want it to do. Hmm. Let's go back to um astral the planes you know the realms like um you know even where are we you know it's it doesn't look like um a lot of the pictures that we have been given by um nasa it it doesn't look like that when you get outside and you have a look it's it's not that way at all what would you say about that darius so this is a thing, like I said before, that everybody has access to the records, especially when they take the soul out of the body and access it. When you cross over and you die, right, uh, which you don't have to die to do this, by the way, you could leave your body and still access this. But mm-hmm. you all, all is known to all souls. There's no such thing as a lie. Everything's recorded and there's no such thing as privacy. Every detail of your life is recorded here and can be accessed in the records. The, the, mm-hmm. They're it's the records of all things, right? And that's including the nature of reality, where we where we are, what this place is. Mm-hmm. Now, when you look back in the history of of spiritual people or the Mayans and uh, way back, mm-hmm. they all depict this as a realm. NASA. Mm-hmm. And the and the ball and the space and the way that they're portraying the universe to be is not the way it is at all. Right. It's actually that's the only thing that's new here. Now I've accessed the nature of reality. I've actually been showing it when I was uh, out of my body. I've been showing it about three times in the halls of a mente, um, which they actually show you this realm on a table. It's it's a table on the other side, of which they show you this construct in this realm. I've also been taken to a part of the records. Uh, it's a hall where they show you all of these different realms, like pretty much on some of them are on like puddles on the floor. Some of them are like stacked on shelves. 
and they look like fish bowls. Some of them look like open fish bowls, and some of them have many different dimensional spaces. Now, the best way to understand what I'm, what I'm saying is this. The realm that we're in now is within a construct, right? So mm -hmm. there's, th there's three things here. There's a construct, there's a realm, and multidimensional spaces. Now, the realm and the multidimensional spaces, the construct is what's containing all of that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. So we're in a construct, and right now, within that construct, we are living within a realm that people call Earth. Some people call it Gaia. I will consider this as realm one, right? Mm -hmm. Within yeah. this realm that we live in, there are multidimensional spaces within this realm. Mm -hmm. And those multidimensional spaces can be accessed through, uh, I've accessed them through the stars. Um, I'll also access them through the halls of mirrors, which is giving you access to all these, these dimensional spaces. The thing, that, the thing that people don't understand is that you are so, we are all so powerful that every thought that you have, quite literally, is manifesting a dimensional space within this realm that could be accessed by soul that knows how to access it. Like me taking my soul out of the body, I could access people's private thoughts. And I'm not just saying that as theoretical. This is a fact because I have experienced it numerous times and it has been proven. Just the, I'll even go back on the 31st of March, 2023, I had an out of body experience. And for the sake of privacy, I'll call him Mike. Mm -hmm. um, Mike was thinking something privately for two weeks. He hasn't told anybody. And I was out of my body one day and he was, I walked into the backyard and I'm like, huh, there's a tent in the backyard. And I'm like, this is Mike's tent. Mike is thinking about a tent. And I'm like, hmm. is he, is he planning for like a wedding or like what, why is this happening? So I end up waking back up, coming back into my body. And then I call him the next day and I say, Mike, are you planning for something like a wedding or a party or something? Because I had an out of body experience again. And I, and I've seen that there was a tent out in the backyard. He's like, no, but I've, I, I'm not planning for that, but I've been thinking about building or putting up a tent in the backyard for a spiritual practice. So, and he hasn't even told his own partner that he's been thinking that privately. So all of your thoughts are literally creating a dimensional space within this realm that could be accessed because you are creating a field, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. everything that you put out is manifested there. Now, there's been numerous times as well that I've also seen things taking place in real time. You also get this with near-death experience people where if someone's on the operating table and they die, they could see things and hear things, what's going on that they can't possibly know of. I've done this many times with Mike as well, confirming with him things that he said, things that he have that things that he has done mm -hmm. to also validate it for myself as well, that I'm seeing what's taking place at real time, as well as seeing thought forms materialize there. Mm, that's fascinating. Because that that brings the question, like, um, so you're actually accessing the thoughts of another, but you're seeing it like in a manifestation. So, yes, yeah. You, you, you. Thank you for listening to Navigating the Truth and my guest Darius Wright. If you would like to hear this interview in its entirety please go to kcrradio.com and you can access the archive for free. Thank you.